Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I think you know what we're going to be doing again today. It's another interview practice, but with a bit of a twist. This is my actual interview question. So when I applied to Cambridge at Churchill College, this is the interview question that I got. So we're going to be having a go at this and seeing if I can remember what to do here and also giving you the opportunity to see one that I actually did all the way back then. So the difference with this one compared to some of the other ones we've done is this one actually came in three different parts. How they gave it to us at Cambridge is it was very leading up. You give simple problems and build on it, build on it, build on it until you get a pretty difficult problem. Now, I've put the full question on screen. We're gonna be doing it part by part, but I really encourage you to pause the video, have a go at the whole thing, and if you get stuck or even if you finish the full thing, put it in the comments and come and back and watch the video and check we got the same answers. Now, if you're ready, let's get into it. So let's start out by doing part A and sketching sine of X. So again, in my interview, they weren't too detailed about this. They just wanted a quick sketch, get, know you know the right ideas, where things lie, stuff like that. So I'm gonna sketch sine of X. So let's first draw my axes. This is X and then this is Y. And we've got the curve that looks like this. I'm just gonna draw it between uh, zero and two pi, just to get a rough idea. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna sketch it between minus two pi and two pi. So again, on the bottom, we've got a minimum of minus one, we've got a maximum of plus one, and then just where it crosses the axes, we have it at pi, two pi, uh, minus pi, and minus two pi. And that's all they really want. They just want a quick sketch, just to know you actually know what sign looks like, get a rough gauge for what you're comfortable with to start with. So, key for this question is every part leads on from the last. So next part is sketch sine of one over X. Again, just a sketch, but this is a lot more difficult now because we need to use a bit of intuition for what happens here, X and Y. So we need to think about what happens to our maxima and minima. Now, sine is still just sine on its own. It's still gonna go between one and minus one. One and minus one. But let's have a look at our peaks. Well, we had a peak at pi by two before, but now it's not pi by two, it's two over pi. So we have a peak at two over pi. I'm gonna move it further out just because I know what this graph looks like. So two over pi, so that's a peak. And then we had a minimum at three pi by two which now becomes two over three pi. So two thirds of pi, so it's less, okay? And then we'll have another maximum, which will be at uh, five pi by two, which becomes two over five pi, so it's even less again. And then what we're gonna get is that these keep oscillating back and forwards. As we go to more and more maxima and minima, they're gonna get higher and higher. Eventually we're gonna get something like 17 pi by two, which is gonna be pi, uh, two over 17 pi, it's gonna be really small. So we're gonna get oscillations that go backwards and forwards. Now, as x goes to infinity, on our previous graph, that's the same as x going to zero. So as x goes to zero, our graph goes to zero. So we get, after this two pi, which is our last maximum, we go down and we go towards zero like that. And then in between this space, we've got as x goes to zero, for this graph, well, that's undefined really because as x goes to zero, we have one over infinity and on our sine of x graph, we have those massive oscillations that, sorry, those oscillations that keep going up and up until infinity. So it could be anywhere between one and minus one. So because I know where the maximum and minimum are, I know it's gonna keep oscillating like this, like this, like this like this, and it's just gonna oscillate backwards and forwards, probably better than I can draw it. And those oscillations are gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner. And what I also know is that sine of one over X is still an odd function. So I know the opposite happens in the negative region. So we had a maximum at two over pi, so I'll have a minimum at minus two over pi. And again, the same thing will happen. So it will go down to zero there, and I will get oscillations that go up down, up, down, up, down, and get more, more erratic the closer you get to zero. So yeah, it's quite an interesting graph because it's now all those oscillations that were between zero and infinity are now squished to be being between zero and two over pi. Okay, that's part B done. So next we'll move on to part C. We wanna sketch X times sine 
1 over x. Okay, so now we want to be a bit more careful with what happens as things go to 0 and as they go to infinity. Because now I know that everything is going to oscillate widely as I go towards 0. That, that extra factor of x isn't going to make much of a difference on those oscillations. But it might affect what the behaviour looks like. So we first want to have a look at that. Well, as x goes towards 0, then, yep, x sine 1 over x will, in fact, go to 0. It might still oscillate, but it's definitely going to go to 0. And in fact, the peaks, which normally are going from 1 to minus 1 for sine, sine of 1 over x, are now going to be multiplied by an x. So those peaks are going to increase linearly, as well as those minimums. But what about as x goes to infinity? Well, we need to actually do a bit more investigation into that. And in fact, I don't quite like sine 1 over x, so I'm going to do a bit of a substitution. So, substitution of z equals 1 over x. And now I'm not looking as x goes to infinity, but for as z goes towards 0. So, um, I've now got the function 1 over z sine of z. And I'm looking for as z goes to 0 positively, because we're looking in the positive region, we're doing plus infinity. Okay, well, I know that sine has a nice little Taylor expansion as z goes towards zero. So as z goes towards zero, this is approximately one over z times by z, which is equal to one. So that means as x goes to infinity or z goes to zero, I have x sine one over x going towards one. So that means my graph tends towards one as I go to infinity. Okay, doing the same, but for minus infinity, so as x goes to minus infinity, well, I've still got 1 over z sine z, but I'm now looking as z goes to 0 minus, but it's the same thing, because if you think about sine, it's whether you're in the negative region or the positive region, the small approximation will still be z. So it's still 1 over z times by z, which is 1. So x sine 1 over x still tends to 1 as x tends to minus infinity. But I also know that the peaks and troughs uh, follow a pattern of x. So the peaks are around where x is and where 1 over uh, minus x is. So now sketching this, I've got x and I've got y. So first off, I'm going to draw on those where those peaks will be using the sketch. So what I'm going to draw on is dashed lines just to represent where the peaks are. Go along here. And then I know I've got oscillations that go forwards and backwards from there. Now, I know there's no peak after 2 over pi by my previous drawing. So I know that the maximum it can be, the maximum peak will be at... 2 over pi, which is less than 1. So I know that eventually it's going to, instead of peaking, it will go towards 1, which is this line here, at 1. And similarly on the other side, we're going to have, it's an even function because it's two odd functions multiplied together. We're going to have this kind of sketch where it goes along there. And it should be symmetric on both sides. As symmetric as I can draw it, at least. Okay, so that's that one. Got one more. It's a bit of a long, longer one here. So that's part D. So this is x squared sine 1 over x. Okay, so we've got x squared sine 1 over x. So how do we want to be thinking about this? Well, you know, identically to uh, x sine 1 over x, we want to be thinking about it in the exact same way. But now you can think about it even more easily that we still have as x goes towards 0, this tends towards 0. So x squared sine 1 over x tends to 0. And instead of having those peaks following a linear path, it will instead be a quadratic path. So all the minimum and maximums, while it's oscillating, we'll be following a quadratic x squared shape. So we've done that. Now again, we want to think about what happens as x goes to infinity. Now you can kind of think it exactly as before. 
um, you can do the substitution for z equals one over x, but you'll end up, all we had is before we had it going towards one, now we've multiplied that by an x. So instead of it, it going towards one, x squared sine one over x follows the path of x. So it has an oblique asymptote at y equals x. And similarly, as x goes to minus infinity, we have an oblique asymptote at y equals x. Because all we're doing is we're multiplying that one that we had before by x. So it goes towards x. So in fact, we're kind of done there. We could follow the same path to follow to find the uh, find where the last maximum is, but we don't need to do that for this. So all we need to do is a final sketch where we're sketching these ideas on there. So first off, I'm going to draw a quadratic in the dashed line here, which is what our peaks are going to follow. Peaks are whenever sine of one over x is equal to one, which is going to be the same as x equals x squared. So it's going to the peaks are going to follow this path. And now we've also got a linear line, which I will draw in a different colour, which is the long-term behaviour as x goes to infinity. And again, this will be an odd function. We've got x squared, which is an even function, multiplied by sine 1 over x, which is an odd function. So overall, an odd function. So now, sketching these on, I'm going to have it looking like this and it tending towards y equals x. And it tending towards y equals x on both sides. And that is our graph. So I probably should have drawn more isolations on the inside, but that's the kind of idea. It oscillates really a lot as you go towards zero. As you go out, eventually will stop oscillating and just go towards its long-term behavior. In this case, y equals x. I should label this as y equals x and the other one to be y equals x squared and y equals minus x squared for this one. And that's all you need to do for this question. Um, it's only sketching, so you don't need that much detail. I could have added a lot more detail explaining why things happen, but that was not needed for this question. Remember, it's only about 10, 15 minute question. They'll guide you through it. They'll give you a lot of advice and ask you questions as you're going to make sure you're on the right path. Remember, don't think about it like it's a test. It's more like it's a conversation. It's a conversation with some mathematicians talking about some interesting functions. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this question. I remember being very stressed over it at the time, but I actually kind of enjoyed it as a question and I kind of enjoyed this part of the interview. Um, now, if you like this, let me know and I will do the other two questions from my interview. But hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.